In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about low back strengthening exercises. First of all, we're going to talk about the lower back, how it works, and what makes it up. And then we're going to start talking about um, exercises that are more effective and exercises that are less effective. If you are struggling with lower back pain and you do need some help, just click the link below and you'll go to, through to my How to Overcome Lower Back Pain Consultation and Coaching. Now this can be done online and face to face. There's a link down there for both of them and the aim of it is to help you overcome your lower back pain by um, going through a full consultation assessment and then talking about how we can rebuild your lower back into a more healthier pain-free state. In this tutorial, I'm gonna start by talking about and using a metaphor of a suspension bridge. Now this is the suspension bridge from where I live in Bristol in the UK, so Clifton Suspension Bridge. Now that isn't necessarily that important, but what it does help us understand is how the lower back works. And in, in some respects, it's a, it's a sort of a fresh perspective or another perspective on why we might choose other exercises over exercises, say, like a back extension. Now, there are a number of muscles that cover the lower back. I'm gonna start by talking about multifidus, and then I'm gonna build it out into other um, muscles so we can understand how we go about choosing these lower back strengthening um, exercises. So. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide this um, this bridge up into five sections. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then five. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to say this is L1, this is L2, L3, L4, L5. Then you've got the hips down here, and you've got the ribs up here. Now, so what I've done there is I've essentially divided up into each of the vertebra and you've kind of got the bony anatomy with the rib, uh, the hips and the ribs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to layer a muscle on the top of it known as multifidus. Now multifidus is a small, uh, or it's, not a, it's a small muscle, but it's a collection of small muscles. And what these muscles do is they cover segments of the spine. So they will stabilize each segment of the spine. So what it will do is it will come off the pelvis, so segment number one, and it will stabilize L5 to the pelvis. Or let's just break this up into sections of road. It will basically hold this first sec segment of road onto the bridge. Then what we've got is the next segment of multifidus will go from L5 onto L4. So again, it will stabilize and hold L4 against L5. And then you've got the one before stabilizing L5 to S1 or the pelvis. And then same again here. L3, oh, sorry, L4 onto L3. So now L3 or that segment of road is now stabilized and held onto L4. And then as L3 onto L2 and L2 onto L1 and then this continues up the spine. So multifidus is very good at stabilizing each segment of the spine. So when we try and engage multifidus, which in some respects is, um, is, is hard to do consciously, but if we use an exercise uh, like the back extension, it will engage multifidus because of the contraction and it will stabilize segment on segment. Now, what we then have is what lies over the top. Now you can see here, you've got this sort of what would maybe described as like a beam, although it's not a beam, because again, it's built in segments that goes across the whole spine. So if I now layer two more muscles on top, which we've got uh, longissimus and iliocostalis. Now again, if we look at the insertion points and the, 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 the structures that they join to, we go all the way to, again, if we bring in also uh, the thoracolumbar fascia, that then goes from the base of the pelvis, or the sacrum, all the way up across the lower back, and then up onto the rib cage. So what longissimus and iliocostalis are doing is they are stabilizing the entire lower back. They aren't stabilizing individual segments which is what multifidus is there for. So if we're trying to engage multifidus or activate multifidus, we're trying to activate an inefficient system. What we want to activate are longissimus and iliocostalis because they are running from the hips 
all the way to the ribs. Again, if you look at the insertion and the origin of these, we're stabilizing the whole area, not just individual segments of it. So when we are talking about exercises, these are the muscles that we want to be activating because they are much more effective at stabilizing the lower back rather than segments of the lower back. Multifidus is a very good secondary stabilizer, but a very poor primary stabilizer. And the primary stabilizers are longissimus and multifida, uh, longissimus and iliocostalis. And what we'll do in the next slide is look a little bit more uh, at this, but from uh, an anatomical perspective with some anatomical um, images. So let's now essentially just layer this on top of what we've talked about. So we've got, as I just talked about, we've got one side of the bridge. We've then got the, uh, the suspension bridge itself going through here. And then we've got the other side of the bridge here, which is where the rib cage is. Excuse my slightly poor drawing, but that's the idea. And then we've got obviously the rib cage up here and then we've got the pelvis down here and then we've got this little bridge in between. Now again, we've got that here. Again, if I draw that across. So what you can see is when we look at multifidus, you've got, although it's not necessarily the greatest image, but you've got all these different sections which stabilize each segment. You can just about see that it's coming off the transverse processes of each vertebra. So you can sort of see all the different sections of multifidus very sort of mm, loosely across here. And then this continues up the spine, but it works in these little, um, these little compartments. And then what you can see is you've got longissimus, so you've got the thoracolumbar fascia, which is detailed there. Essentially, it's one big sheath of fascia, but this section is known as the thoracolumbar fascia. And then you've got these muscles here, longissimus and iliocostalis, which are essentially stabilizing the whole area because it's covering, like I showed on the suspension bridge, it's covering and holding up the whole suspension bridge or covering up and holding the whole lower back with the insurgent point, so much longer levers, so it's again, it's a much more efficient type of system coming off of the rib cage and coming off of the pelvis. So this again is a much more effective way of stabilizing the area. If we then want to bring in another muscle, we can talk about latissimus dorsi. So we've got latissimus dorsi coming up here, again joining into thoracolumbar fascia in here. Again, if you want to take it a step further, glute max, glute medius, glute max, glute medius on either side, which again are going to help stabilize pelvis, which is then going to help stabilize thoracolumbar fascia from below and then stabilize lower back as well. So we've got all these different muscles working in unison. If we just try and isolate off multifidus and do back extensions, it's a very inefficient system of, um, or inefficient way of stabilizing a whole system. We are much better off stabilizing um, with other exercises using all of these, um, all of these structures as one system. So what we'll do next is look at some basic exercises or some fundamental exercises that can start stabilizing, uh, stabilizing this area. I've talked about these exercises before and I will continue to talk about them in the future because on so many different levels or from so many different perspectives, they are much more effective at stabilizing the lower back than a back extension. So we've got bird dog here. So again, if we take, we've got one side, as the pelvis, we've got this side of the bridge as the rib cage, and then we've got the bridge or the lower back itself in the middle. Now again, by extending the leg, we extend the lever, by extending the arm, we extend the lever, and we also do this, so we've got extension of the arm, extension of the leg, so again, you're extending that lever so much more as well. So this is where we can get glute max, activated on this side. We can get iliocostalis and long longissimus activated on this side. We can get latissimus dorsi activated on this side. So again, we're stabilizing through that whole system 
rather than just each segment S1 to L5, L5 to L4, it's a very small system, very small segments, very inefficient way of stabilizing. So we've got the bird dog that does this. We've then got another exercise, side plank, where we can get latissimus dorsi again involved. You've got glute medius on the outside involved. Again, stabilizing the whole area through um, uh, the rib cage across the lower back into the pelvis. We could add a bridge into this for more glute activation, and there are ways of um, activating latissimus dorsi as well and getting that involved. And then if you wanna take it on um, another level further, you would then start looking at standing good mornings. I, I'd be um, um, sort of specific about that. And also, you know, you've got certain forms of deadlift as well. Again, with regards to lower back, we would then start uh, choosing these exercises more accordingly, specifically to types of lower back pain. But essentially what we're trying to do is get the whole system working. And these are two exercises that can start you off getting the, the whole system working as one thing, rather than just trying to isolate and be specific about certain um, uh, segments. Because again, if you're just trying to stabilize a segment, it's a very inefficient way of stabilizing the area. It's very good secondary, but it will come after longissimus, iliocostalis, lats, thoracolumbar fascia, glutes, so on and so forth. That's what we want working, is that whole system across, rather than these little parts within here, because they aren't very efficient ways of stabilizing an area. If you found this content useful and you want to hear uh, some more about it, please do just hit the like button below and that will help me understand what content uh, want to be listened to and watched and learnt about. Um, please do hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when these videos are um, being released. And also leave any comments and questions below. If you have a comment, if you've enjoyed it, uh, what did you enjoy, what did you learn? Or if you have a question about it, add that question below and I'll do my best to answer it in the comments, um, replying to you as soon as possible.